In this video, I'm going to show you how AppPressor takes your website content and allows you to put that into your app. So I have a website here that has LearnDash installed and it has some courses that allow people to take these courses and track their course completion and view lessons and videos and things like that. And you have to be registered for some of the courses and some of the courses are free and open to everyone. So I'm gonna show you quickly how that works. If you, uh, once you create your first app, you will be shown a screen like this. And I'm just gonna, we actually have templates that you can start with that make this easier, but I'm gonna start from scratch just so you can see how it works. So the first thing that we would do is create a new page that we're going to show our courses on. And in this case, we're going to choose the custom layout page. I'm going to call this courses. And if we look in our documentation, you'll see that we have some code here. It's kind of like a WordPress short code. We call them components, but this is actually going to display our courses using the WP API. And so all I need to do is go to my page and paste that that code in there and change it to be my website here. So, oops, learn.appressor.com is my website. And then the rest is just the, uh, that connects to our, it's the API endpoint that connects to our plugin. We can do a lot of other stuff here, such as adding in a uh, title. And we can do more like add other categories of courses or some custom content down there. But for now, I'm just going to do this and save it. AppPressor works kind of like WordPress where you have a menu and you need to add pages to that menu for them to show up in the app. So the next thing we're going to do is go and create a menu. And I'm going to call this my um, courses menu. And then I'm going to actually add my courses page to that menu. Now we can do things like add icons and you can look up in our documentation the name of different icons, things like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and save that. In our settings, we tell the app what menu we want to use. So I'm gonna choose courses menu here and save it. And then I'm actually going to go and compile the app together to uh, actually put our course page into the app and configure our menu and things like that. Um, this is how we can build our app for testing on a device. It's also how we update and ref <clears throat> refresh the preview. So you'll see once that's built, you'll see that I have my courses in the app and I have a menu with one item here. And I can click into this and actually view my courses. It has my course status and all these type of things. So um, let's say that I want to allow my customers to log in and uh, be able to view some of my protected content. I can do that by clicking out of our app customizer, which takes you back to your app dashboard. And this has a bunch of different configuration settings here, including push notifications and um, login settings. Now, um, if you use one of our app starter templates, this is already going to be done for you. But uh, what I can do is add a login button to the side menu and I can put my WordPress URL here. I can also allow users to register. Um, and this is going to use the same WordPress login that you have on your site. So if someone is a WordPress user on your site, they'll be able to log in through the app. And if they, uh, they are also able to register, which will add them as a WordPress user on your site. So you'll see that now we have a login button, which is going to allow people to log in through here or to register. And then once they're logged in, they're actually, uh, their avatar will be displayed along with their name. And then they can access content that is protected through a membership plugin or through LearnDash or um, other methods on your site. Another thing you may be wondering about is how to get your WordPress, other WordPress content into the app. So let me give you an example of how we would pull in WordPress posts. So I'm going to go ahead and add another custom page. I'm going to click on WordPress posts and I'm going to call this posts. I can choose between a couple of different layouts and then I can add in an API route. So this is just going to connect to my site. 
through a uh, the WordPress API, which is in WordPress core, does not re require any extra configuration or anything like that. Uh, we can help you find this endpoint. It's um, it's very simple. It's usually if you just go to uh, posts like that, um, then that is it's your site, and then wpjson slash wp slash v2 slash your uh, post type. So it's important to know that your Custom post types are probably not in the API by default. That is a um, that's how WordPress works, and we can help you uh, get your custom post types into the API along with your custom post meta. So, for example, if you have like an events plugin, um, you probably won't be able to just put in events here and see it. Um, you will need to do some custom uh, add one of our plugins or one of our uh, configurations to get that to work. And we have more information about that in our documentation. But uh, we can do something like add in posts. I'm going to allow people to favorite. And then I'm going to choose to add this right to my app menu. And what that's going to do is add it to my app menu and refresh so that I can actually see it. So if I click into the menu, I can click into posts. And I will see that I have my WordPress posts here. And um, it has the content. It's going to have embedded videos and things like that. Now, this is using the uh, WordPress API, which is basically what you see here. It's going to be your uh, content with text and um, images and videos and things like that. Um, if you have something that is a, a custom plugin, so for example, a like a Facebook. Um, comments plugin. When you click into these posts, you it, you won't see your Facebook comments plugin because uh, we can't actually pull that stuff through the API. So we have other ways to help you get content like that into the app. Um, but just note that when you're using the API like this, it is just your uh, text and your images, media, things like that. You can also um, allow people to favorite it and then when they go to their favorites tab they'll see that here. And this is all cached for offline use so they can go back and look at those you know if they're on an airplane or something like that. It also has search um, and this is just a great fast way to get your content into the app. Sometimes you have a WordPress plugin, like a Forms plugin or something like that, that will not show up um, through the API. So I'm going to show you how we would add that in now. So basically, those are going to be displayed in an iframe. And um, you don't need to worry about what that means in a technical sense. But basically, we're just going to show your WordPress page in the app. So I'm going to show you what that looks like. Now, I have a contact form that is, let me see if I can find it here. So I have a, a gravity form on my website and I want to put this in the app. So the way that I would do that is I would go to my app menu and I would click on add item and I would click on the WordPress slash external links and then I would just paste the URL to my site there, make sure it's HTTPS and then I would add it to the menu. Now if I save that it's going to refresh our preview so that we see the contact form in the app. I can click on that and you'll see that my contact form is now in the app and I can fill it out and um, actually submit the form as well. It's uh, The page is a bit cut off but there is the submit button down there at the bottom. And so this is actually displaying a your WordPress page kind of in an iframe and that's a great way to get a plugin like a form to work. For more advanced integrations like WooCommerce and BuddyPress, we have those already set up for you. So you would install our plugin and in our setup documentation it tells you more about that. Then you can click on, for example, with BuddyPress our app community tab and you would create your different components and add those to your app. And those are automatically set up for you in your, uh, in your app. So all you have to do is create those pages and add them to the menu. And the same goes with your app commerce pages uh, for WooCommerce. So you are allowed to, with, with uh, app commerce, for example, you can add in um, these short codes or, or components that we have here. And you, could, you are allowed to customize those. So you can say what products you want to display and you can create a custom layout for your shop page and for your cart page and um, things like that. So you can look at how those work in other videos. Um, and then I will show you 
one other thing if you want to add let's say a an external link to your website I can actually go to the menu and add a page put in my website here and add it to the menu now after you added a link to the menu you you can open it up and you have a few extra customization options um, so for example if I click open link a new tab that's going to take us to a web browser when we click on this menu link um, we can also add a an icon and then we have extra classes and these are things like if you want to only show this to logged in people or if you want to hide it from the menu completely you can do that so if I go ahead and save this, it's going to refresh my preview and you'll see that I have a link to my website here and when I click on it, it's going to send me to the website and inside the app itself, it's going to open up a modal window which is called an in-app browser. You have lots of options to customize your app. For example, if we go into the colors tab, you'll see that you can change the color of your app you can change the color of the left menu background and the text and the icon color and you have um, basically lots of color pickers that you can use to change things in the app. Um, some of the content that comes in through the API is actually embedded in the app so you think of it as being separate from your website and so the way that you would customize this is with custom CSS so if you are able to write custom CSS you can basically change the way that a lot of different things look inside the app and uh, take that as far as you want so we also have settings for you to be able to uh, upload a custom logo and add your own icon for the app stores and your splash screens change languages and things like that and we go over these all in depth in other videos um, once you get the app how you want it you are able to add in a uh, phone gap build auth token here and um, that's very easy to get phone gap build is a free service that is that uses uh, phone gap to compile your app into a native package for device testing and for the app stores and so you click on build app and what that will do is compile the app so that you can um, put it on your device and then once that's ready we can actually help you get the app into the app stores